It has been a big year for science. With COVID-19 still ravaging the world, all eyes have turned to medical research. There have been many breakthroughs in many fields this year, and some of them have been pretty huge. It's always exciting to see what scientists can produce when they're given the time and the resources, something that they often lack. Here I'm going to discuss 10 of the biggest breakthroughs in physics this year. Now, of course, this is just my opinion, so let me know down in the comments what you think the biggest breakthroughs were. Number 10. Coherent control of nuclear exotons. Coherent control in electrons is pretty commonplace these days. Developments in precision lasers allowed us to probe these transitions in electrons and thus gave us the ability to coherently manipulate them. However, when this comes to a nuclear spins, it's a different story. While nuclei also have a series of energies, the separation between these states is six orders of magnitude larger than that of electrons. This means really high energy photons need to be used to drive these transitions. Scientists at the Max Planck Institute in Heidelberg, Germany, have used X-rays to achieve this. This work is quite significant due to the amount of energy that's required. This is only the first demonstration of coherent control of nuclei. This may lead to drastic changes in several different technologies. Number nine, making a topological insulator vertical cavity laser array. Now, that's a bit of a mouthful, so let's break that down. Lasers are such a useful piece of technology, but they have some limitations. One major limitation is the amount of power that a single laser can produce. When making extremely high powered lasers, we can come across the issue where the laser cavity has so much energy in it that it ends up destroying itself. One solution would be to combine multiple lasers together so that each laser can be under this threshold and they can combine in terms of their energy. However, there's a problem with this because the important quality of a laser is that it is coherent and two lasers next to each other are not coherent with each other. So these scientists have found a way to couple these lasers together using a topological insulator. This is a material that is conductive on its surface while insulating in its bulk, and it has several very useful qualities. By building a laser cavity array into this topological insulator substrate, they were able to couple the lasers together so that each cavity would laze with the one next to it coherently. This is a super interesting result that has significant impact for high powered lasers and thus the different technologies and science that we can do with those. In fact, there's other research in this list that also necessitates extremely high powered lasers. Number eight, Pauli blocking in ultra cold gases. This was a fascinating application of the Pauli exclusion principle to quite an exotic system. The Pauli exclusion principle tells us that two identical fermions cannot be in the same state at the same time. Well, three separate groups have used this on an ultra cold gas. Here they basically cooled the compressed gas down to cold enough temperatures that all the low energy states of the gas became occupied. In this state, the Pauli exclusion principle stops the atoms from changing to a different state because they're all already occupied. They were able to show a gas in this state would stop interacting with light and therefore become transparent. This is a very interesting system because the atoms inside this ultra cold gas effectively become immune from multiple noise sources. As such, it's likely a system like this will find many applications in quantum physics in the coming years. Number seven, imaging the magnetic field of a black hole event horizon. One open question about black holes is why do they form such powerful jets of material that are shot out of the black hole rather than being captured? Well, we are now one step closer to answering that question. It was only in 2019 that the first shadow of a black hole was imaged. Well, this same group has gone back and looked at the same black hole and they've looked at the polarization of the light coming from that black hole. The polarization of the light tells us about the magnetic field that was present in the accretion disk of the black hole, as the polarization of the light is dependent on that magnetic field that it previously interacted with. They were able to use this to show that this black hole has extremely large magnetic fields. So large that they theorize that this is responsible for the jets themselves, and that charged material, when coming into contact with these incredibly large magnetic fields, is shot out of the black hole when non-charged material is able to go through the event horizon. This is a major step towards us forming a better understanding about black holes and how they operate and how our universe operates in general. 
Number six, laser cooling of anti-hydrogen atoms. Lasers have been used to cool atoms for a long time. This works by taking advantage of the Doppler shift of light. The lasers are detuned from atomic transitions such that they only apply pressure if the atom is moving towards the laser source, effectively slowing the atoms down, or in other words, cooling them. By combining several of these lasers, the whole cloud of atoms can be cooled down using this pressure. Well, for the first time, scientists have been able to use this on antimatter. They took positrons and antiprotons that were produced in the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland and then combined these two particles to make an anti-hydrogen. They were able to capture these anti-hydrogens in a trap and then they were able to cool them down using lasers to near zero temperatures. This is an amazing result. It allows us to probe antimatter in extremely high precision, hopefully opening the door to understanding why our universe is made of matter rather than antimatter. Number five the first helicopter flight on Mars. There's been a lot of significant breakthroughs related to Mars exploration this year. From observing the Martian aurora to detecting the constitution of the Martian core. But for this list, I picked just one, the first helicopter flight on Mars. This is a considerable feat, considering how much thinner the atmosphere is on Mars. In order to achieve this, the $85 million helicopter had to spend its counter-rotating blades at more than 2,400 revolutions per minute. Now the flight was a short one, only lasting around 39 seconds. But the Wright brothers' first flight was also pretty short. Since this initial flight, many more have also been successful. And this has helped us gather vital information about the atmosphere of Mars and the dust of Mars itself. In particular, one open question was how statically charged is this dust? And this has helped to answer these questions. Hopefully this information will lead to improved designs that will allow us to fly long distances reliably on Mars to do further explorations. Number four, artificial intelligence used to predict human protein structures. Now, some people may claim that this isn't really physics as it is more computer science and it's applied to life sciences. But using artificial intelligence to make predictions is a massive topic in physics today. And this was a major breakthrough in using such a system to make concrete predictions about physical structures that we can describe through physics. In this work, Google's sister company DeepMind made predictions about almost all of the 20,000 proteins of the human genome. This is a huge repository of these proteins, many of which we have never measured before. Importantly, when comparing these to proteins that we have measured before, they were remarkably similar. At least in the case of this study, it gives us a lot of hope that artificial intelligence can make these predictions, and potentially that we can act on these predictions without even having measured the protein first. Beyond this, it does give us a lot of hope that we can use artificial intelligence to make predictions in general about things that we can't measure. All in all, we'll have to wait and see. Number three laser ignition of a nuclear fusion reactor. Every few years, there's a major breakthrough in nuclear fusion, but we're still yet to realize this as an energy source. The main reason is that we are yet to be able to pass the fusion ignition threshold. This is where the fusion reaction produces more energy than was initially put in to start the reaction. This year, we have seen one of the most significant steps towards this threshold in decades. Researchers from California demonstrated a laser ignition of a fusion reaction that produced 1.3 megajoules of energy, which was roughly 70% of the energy that was put in by the lasers. While this is short of the threshold, it is 25 times more energy than a similar experiment done in 2018. This gives us hope that we're only a few years away from witnessing the ignition of our first energy producing fusion reactor. Coming in at number two is the measurement of muon magnetic moment. There's been an open question for about 20 years. What exactly is the magnetic moment of a muon? Where muons are leptons, and they're very similar to electrons, but significantly heavier. In 2001, an experimental measurement showed that the muon had a slightly larger magnetic moment than predicted. But this and other measurements have been in question of how valid they were for many years. Well, this latest measurement was looking exactly at this question 
and it seems to agree with the 2001 result. The muon has a higher magnetic moment than is predicted by the standard model. The question remains as to why. Many scientists are looking into the possibility that this is caused by vacuum fluctuations. This is where atoms are spontaneously created and annihilated in the vacuum. During this process, these atoms can interact with the muon and therefore change the measurement that we make of its magnetic moment. Making corrections for vacuum fluctuations isn't new. In fact, it's very commonplace. The problem is that this standard method doesn't account for the increase of the muon magnetic moment. Therefore, this points to the possibility of new exotic particles existing that are not within the standard model currently. And as such, this may be strong evidence for physics beyond the standard model. Finally, in number one position is achieving quantum entanglement with macroscopic objects. Quantum entanglement is a crucial component of utilizing quantum mechanics for future technologies, most importantly for quantum computing. But there is a problem with making qubits that are both reliable and live for a long time. To achieve this, scientists often look at using single atoms or superconducting flux loops to act as qubits. This is because using larger systems often results in worse performance or even no quantum mechanical behavior at all. Well, in this latest piece of work, scientists were able to show quantum entanglement between two macroscopic drums. This amounts to trillions of spins and is a complete game changer in this space. The possibility of making qubits from large structures completely changes the way we look at quantum technologies. Scientists involved in this research suggest that this could be used for quantum communication. Acting as a quantum repeater, to transfer entanglement from one quantum system to another. This is a major breakthrough, and I'm sure we'll start to see many uses of a system like this in the coming years. If you think I missed any of the major breakthroughs this year, let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching, have fun, and see you next time.